It took me probably about six months, maybe just to get the character, you know, down, um, understand the ropes, get used to the sound, the noise on set, just before a, for a take. That was quite full on. I remember thinking, why is it so noisy? I can't concentrate. I'm going to forget my lines, and you know, I was just, you know, because I was think I was about twenty, I think, when I got that role, and I had just graduated from drama school. Um, and there were people like Elizabeth McRae and Lisa Crittenden, who I used to watch on Prisoner religiously. I loved Prisoner when I was a kid. Um, and Tim, of course. Um, and so I was feeling quite intimidated. But it took me about six months to get my, you know, get my, get my footing. And um, after that, you know, five, five minutes, look at script, bang, on set, shoot it, off set. She was interesting because she was the only regular Māori character, female, on prime time at the time. So there wasn't a lot of um, room, I felt, personally, to move. Um, they kept trying to take her to all sorts of different places, but I kept resisting, and I, um, and I did that for, for, for a reason. Because at that stage in the 90s, you know, people weren't talking about Jackie Money, the character. They, was, they were always referring to her as the Māori nurse um, on Shortland Street. So anything <clears throat> that got um, penned for Jackie Money's character reflected on all Māori women rather than it just being about this one character making a mistake or this one character, you know, being horrendously rude or horrible or racist or what, you know, whatever they wanted to think, you know, storylines they wanted to think up for her. So I made a conscious decision just to make sure that I didn't take her down a road where there was, you know, no way of her being able to get back up on her feet again, even though it was a soap. Um, but, you know, I mean, I kind of... And I, and I was quite staunched about that. And people were actually very kind about making sure that I did get um, storylines that was quite comfortable for me at the time. I had to tell my, bring my father up and go, oh, Dad, I'm, I've got this new role, and I'm playing lesbian, just letting you know, just so you're not going to be shocked by it um, when it comes out. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he saw it on television once. He turned it over and I happened to be at home at the time and it was on and my character was doing something stupid and he was like, oh, what's that rubbish? And then he turned it over. <laughs> he was like, oh, far out. Um, thank God he didn't actually watch it. He would have been, a, yeah, because we were so bad. But um, the relationship dynamic, it was really easy. Um, I liked the character because, you know, like I said, she was free. Um, there was no real major responsibility. Me and Sophia, were, you know, just got up there and did it and had a good time. And um, I think the, the scene in the kitchen was the only time we were like, <laughs> there's all these people staring at us. It was like, I wasn't allowed to move until she got <laughs> her robe put back on her. But it was all, I mean, it was really quite easy. We, were, we just talked to each other and made sure that we felt comfortable. The Tanya character really interested me and because um, there was a Tanya character in Once We Were Warriors in the book. She only featured in a couple of maybe one or two chapters and there was one um, description of her where she got put on the block and she looked at the character Nick and she looked at him like it was his fault and I never forgot it. So when this character was put in front of me, I just thought, what the hell was going through that woman's mind? I didn't, that was my only reference to that character. So a lot of create, the, the creation of her was through um, me writing a diary. I kept a diary and just, um, as Tanya, the character, and every morning before work, I would leave my Parnell apartment. <laughs> go to a Parnell cafe and write this full-on diary of um, Tanya in the morning um, talking about what she's going to do for the rest of the day, you know, to try and get myself into it. He was pretty hard on me. Um, what I realised was it was more about me learning how to stand up for myself in a male environment. And he was just being really, really... Um, staunched with me. 
and like f- for me during the auditions, he'd give me a, a, a direction and then I'd just sit there and mull it over and then he'd go, look at me. And I'd be thinking, what the um, But in the end, um, and I never, I, know, I never take any of that stuff personally because it is about, I reckon if you can figure out your relationship with your director and, and you nail it, then good things can come out of it. And I kind of feel like that with me and him, we kind of worked out what it was that we needed to get from each other. And I needed to get, I needed to have the confidence to be able to stand up to him and he needed to be able to feel confident that he could push me in places that he wanted me to go to. Joy wasn't a character that was um, obvious on the page. She was a mother, and there's all kinds of mothers. Um, the, the dialogue itself didn't really tell you what she was like. Um, the way she dealt with her kids was the only thing, I guess, um, that gave me an idea about Joy. And one of the, but. But then, of course, we shot the film and then a lot of the kids' qualities got taken, some of their characteristics got taken out of the film, so then I couldn't find her anymore. So I had to kind of rethink who the hell Joy was, and it wasn't until I got up to Pawaringa and then I was... They put me in a um, house that one of the locals had very kindly um, vacated and and given to us to stay in, Um, and I was surrounded by hills, and I just went... Oh my God, no wonder she wants her kids to be what they want to be, because that's all you've got to look at. You've got this massive mound of hill, and that's all there is. And then on the other side, you've got these layers of um, sea, uh, sand, sea, uh, bush, tree, hill, sky, uh, clouds, and then sky. So there's these kind of beautiful things to look at but nowhere to go if you know what I mean so you have to get lost in it in some other way um so it wasn't until I got there that I kind of went okay I get her you know I, I, she's a hard-working mum she's just going to try and get food on the table she hasn't got the opportunity to just like go off and have a latte she's got to stay here make sure everything gets done it'll probably have to take you know She'll have to take a day trip into town to do a month's grocery shopping, so she'll have to be very careful about. So all of that sort of stuff I could think about once I got to the location. That funeral scene was, um, mm, yuck. It was yuck. I hated it. Um, just because I've got my, my my daughter was around about the same age, and it, you know I just felt like oh my god I can't even think about her when we shoot the scene because I'll be tempting. I just felt like I would be tempting fate, if you know if I kind of imagined her it being there. It was like no, I'm not going to even think about that. So I, I I kept doing a lot of stepping outside of the character, and trying to find other ways to to get go there emotionally, and um, it was. Interesting watching the kids and how they coped, and they had such a massive job um, to do those 20s. Um, but they did a good job, and there was a bunch of good supportive people around. Um, but I suspect it was hard on them, and I kept getting talking to their parents and just saying, oh, you know, prepare for, for the crash at the end of the, of the shoot, because they'll probably get really hyped up, and then it'll all be over, and then it'll get really exhausted and probably have a collapse um, but yeah it was great it was the first time I'd actually been on a set where it was driven by child actors um, it was completely different energy um, but it taught me how to step back and, and let them take the reins I had to do that a lot you know, you kind of just, my maternal instincts would step in, but it was like, mm, no, just see what happens and see where they go with it. And don't, you know, don't try and hog the camera, Nancy, it's not about you. <laughs>